There is a directory of all government agencies and buildings, except one. Officially, it has no name. The public has never heard of it. Within the bureaucracy of Whitehall, it doesn't even exist. For this, as well as other reasons of state, the men who lived within the clouds of secrecy were totally unprepared for the emergency that threatened to destroy the years of quiet mystery. are on their way, Sir Charles. That's very interesting, Inspector, but what are you going to do with them? Have them surround the building. This building's not in danger. It's the contents of that room and the madman who's in it. Inspector. What is written in that note? It is two o'clock. In exactly one hour at three o'clock, I'm going to blow up this wing of the building. One hour? Well, there's nothing we can do in one hour. Nothing. I've got 15 minutes to get there, five minutes to talk to him, and 15 minutes to get back. Talk to whom? 221B. Baker Street. Inspector Lestrade had often resented what he considered Holmes' intrusion in his cases. There were many occasions when he'd actually asked for help, but never directly, and certainly never officially. It was a game I believe they both enjoyed. Lestrade would pretend he had just dropped in by accident, and Holmes would pretend to believe him. This time, there was no pretense. Lestrade needed Holmes desperately, and immediately. I want to talk to Holmes. Would you please tell him I have to speak with him? Certainly, as soon as he returns. What do you mean, return? He's not here. What do you mean, he's not here? Well, I don't know how else to put it. Holmes isn't here. He's out. Just when I need him. Just when I really need him. I knew I couldn't depend on him. Where is he? He's gone for a walk. At a time like this? At a time like what? I've no time to explain. He's going to blow up the building in 45... Is that clock right? Yes. In 43 minutes, boom! What building? The building is so secret, it doesn't even have a name or an address. It's not even listed in the official registry. I hadn't even heard about it until this morning. What do they do in that building? I don't know. It's a secret. Oh, really? Who's going to blow it up? A young man who works there shut himself in a room with 10 pounds of pure nitroglycerine. Why? I don't know. Well, who is he? I don't know. Can't you break the door down? You can open the door about 10 inches and look in. But he's got it balanced in such a way, push the door one more inch and... In 43 minutes. 42. Oh, we should be here. That's what I said. Where does he usually go when he goes for a walk? Well, no particular place or pattern. He just walks. He just walks.
mistake to come here. We'll give him another few minutes, Inspector. Holmes may be your only hope. Wait any longer. Well, if he comes in in the next few minutes, I'll see that he gets in touch with you as quickly as possible. Thank you, Dr. Watson. Hello, Lestrade. Sense of about time. What? Really, Holmes, we haven't got a moment to lose. Why haven't we got a moment to lose? I'll explain to you in the carriage. Why can't you explain to me here? Really, Holmes, we've got 42 minutes. 41? Can you give me any idea? There's no time now. Sounds like a bomb. So it is a bomb. How did you know? I told you. This kind of time pressure would not fit many situations. A bomb would be one. That's it. Let's go. An execution would be another example, but they take place at dawn. A man dying in hospital would be another, but then you'd want Dr. Watson. Go, Holmes. You were right the well, first time. It is a bomb. Example. Interesting. It can't be a bomb with a fuse 41 minutes long, so it must be a man either holding the bomb or controlling it in some way. Perhaps you could stay here and tell us how to get the bomb away from him. Well, the chances are you won't be able to get it away from him, with or without my help. Well, perhaps you'll have an idea once we're there. Let's hope so, Watson, but I'm not very hopeful. Holmes would have denied vehemently that any of his cases were solved by emotion or intuition. And yet, on many occasions, I'd seen him apparently unconcerned, apparently uninterested. It was infuriating when it happened. But I soon learned that it was the keynote of his extraordinary talent. He could sense when something was not quite what it seemed to be. He could sense when the problem was not what others believed it to be. He was often infuriating, but rarely, rarely wrong. There are only 26 minutes left. Well, everything looks normal so far. You wait till you see it in 26 minutes. Holmes! Holmes, we haven't the time. The Strad said we had 26 minutes. 25 now. Anything new, Jefferson? No, sir. Nothing has changed. If anything had changed, this building would be flying across the channel. Where is the room? Just at the top of the stairs. Holmes! Holmes! Really? Ah, Sir Charles, may I present Dr. Watson? How do you do? How do you do? And this is Mr. Sherlock Holmes, Sir Charles Blyley. How do you do? This way, please, gentlemen. I've heard of you, of course, Mr. Holmes. But certainly very kind of you to come, but what you or anyone can do in the time we have left. 24 minutes, Sir Charles. Yes. That's the room there. My name is Peter Chapman, Mr. Holmes. I'm a great admirer of yours. Thank you. I've heard of Dr. Watson, too, of course. How do you do? Tell me about this young man. Well, he's been employed here for six months. His background? Oh, excellent references. But everyone employed his men is carefully scrutinized. He's even in Cambridge. And all his communications since he barricaded himself in that room have been written, not spoken. I myself observed the first note slipped under the door, and I sent for the police immediately. That was at half past 11. Yes, that was at half past 11. More than two hours ago. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'd like to speak with you. 